Here's an example of a snap disc controller. Basically has some metal protrusion on one side. It could be a long thin cylinder, it could be something flattish like this. They come in a variety of shapes. On the back you have your electrical connection. In this case I have two spade uh, connectors for making my electrical connections. Note that they're separated. Uh, what you do is you connect one wire to one connection and the other wire to the other connection. A uh, snap disc controller is basically a switch. Uh, I'll demonstrate with these two wires. Uh, for a snap disc controller for a solar air heater, you want it to turn on when the solar air heater turns on, uh, heats up. In other words, you want the fan to turn on. Um, so what would happen is when the snap disc controller is cool, in other words, when your solar air heater is cool, these switches open, the wires are disconnected. When the snap disc heater, he, um, controller heats up, then it would close the wires, uh, that closes the switch, and now your fan turns on and starts blowing hot air into your house. Uh, when the solar air heater cools off again, the connections will automatically open and uh, the fan would turn off, stop blowing air into your house, and the solar air heater would then get a chance to heat up again. The uh, snap disc controller that I have is actually the opposite. It's one that is uh, closed right now while it's cool and will open the connection, in other words disconnect or turn off, when it heats up. But that doesn't matter. The circuit I'm going to demonstrate here and show you how to make is the same. Okay, let's start working towards the circuit. Now first I'm just going to test the circuit, demonstrate how it works, and afterwards I'll show you a safe version. So this is the unsafe version. If you're going to do this one, be very careful. There's lots of exposed connections. Uh, this is uh, the easiest way to uh, get power to your system is not to wire it directly into your house. You already have receptacles and power going to receptacles. So get an extension cord and chop off one end. Keep both ends. They're both useful. And uh, there you go. You now have some safe way of wiring into your house. In my case, I seem to have had an extension cord that I went to a hardware store and I bought a... Um, a connector, a plug for it, and I connected that on. Um, but either way, you can do it. It doesn't matter. It's as long as it's. Uh, make sure you get the one that's rated for the amount of current you're going to be using. That's uh, that's the only thing. And same with the wiring. Make sure the wiring is the right thickness for the uh, particular current you're going to be using. The fans and blowers inside a solar air heater are usually pretty low current. But I'll show, demonstrate later how to check it. Okay, so that's one side now. Um, this has three parts coming out of it, in North America at least. Well, for 120 volts it does. Uh, you've got your hot, which is the black one, neutral, which is the white one, and uh, ground, which is the green one. Uh, the hot one's the dangerous one. Neutral should be connected at your breaker panel to ground, so theoretically that's safe. However, do not take a chance on that. Um, my place, for example, neutral is not bounded to ground at the breaker panel. It's not safe, uh, except in one receptacle in place. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's all dangerous, basically, when you're going into household wiring. Now, what we basically want to do is connect our, in this case, I'm going to use a light as my um, uh, power source, as my load. And I, what we want to do is connect it between the hot and the neutral. So, first thing we do, though, is we connect the, using these alligator clips uh, for our prototype system, connect that to the hot and connect that to either side of your snap disk controller, doesn't matter which. And then continue from the other side of your snap disk controller to the um, prongs of your plug for your load here. Um, I'm going to, you now in North America we have a fat prong and a thin prong. I'm going to connect to the thin prong because that's really hot. And uh, But it doesn't really matter in this case, we're all just going straight through. And then the other prong, I'm going to close it all up. I'm going to connect that prong to neutral. Now in this case, there's no ground on this plug, so there's nowhere for my ground what connection to go. Um, so you can see the circuit right there. We go from hot to snap disk controller, from the other side snap disk controller to one prong of my um, plug here, uh, from the other prong of my plug back to neutral, and we go. Now let's uh, make it dangerous now. Okay, there are lots of exposed connections here, so this is now dangerous, so be very, very careful. Now again, my snap disk controller, when the snap disk controller is cool, it, the switch is closed, so my light is on. I'll take my hair dryer again. There you go, the snap disk controller opened the switch because it's now hot. That's the type I have. And I put the fan on it and take a little while, but it'll cool it off and it'll close the switch and the light will come back on. 
go. I heard the switch fit. And now the light comes back on. The, it's cool. Now let's add some protection to our circuit. In this case, I've switched the load from the lamp to the fan, which I actually did have mounted in the solar air heater at one time. Now the protection we're going to add is a fuse. So I have a fuse holder right here, bought at a hardware store, and a box of fuses. But what size fuse do I buy? Well, the size of fuse you buy is based on the voltage, so make sure you get one that's good for 120 volts AC, uh, in North America at least. And um, the current is a tricky part. How much current? Well, the current is based on how much current this load will draw. And uh, you have to measure that somehow. You want the current of the fuse, rating of the fuse, to be larger than the current that your load will draw, um, but not too much larger. Because if there's a short circuit somewhere, your fuse will, fuse will blow. Hopefully the short circuit wasn't in the load. So when the fuse, fuse blows, it'll blow soon enough that your load won't be uh, damaged, which is the whole idea. So to hook it up, what we do is uh, we would put it between the hot and the snap disk controller. That's where the fuse would go. So uh, to measure the current draw from our load, we're going to put a meter in that same location. So before we had connected uh, one connection to the hot of their um, plug here, going to the snap disk controller. Instead, we're going to go to one end, any end, doesn't matter, which end of our meter. And then from there, to the snap disk controller. So we've basically just spliced in our meter, which is where we're going to splice in our fuse once we have the right size. So then we go from the snap disk controller once again to one of the prongs of our um, load. And from there we go back to neutral. Just like before, the only difference is we put in a meter right here. I'll turn the meter on to the AC amps or milliamps scale. Just turn it on so you can see. Hopefully that's visible there. And we'll just run the load. And what I see here is it's 8 milliamps. So it's a pretty small current draw. So it'll be a pretty small fuse for this guy. Um, now my, mine turned on right away because I have the snap disk controller that turns on when it's cool. If you have a snap disk controller that turns on when it's hot, you're going to have to put the blow dryer around it this time to uh, heat up the snap disk controller to close the circuits so that the fan will turn on and you can see the current. So there you go, 8 amps. Let's try another load. Let me make it safe here. That's a small little fan that I used in one solar air heater. This is a uh, squirrel cage uh, fan, which I used in another version of a solar air heater. So once again, I'll connect that up. Now these guys don't care about which one side's hot, which side's neutral. Uh, but this one also has a ground prong here. Probably because it has a metal case. So that metal case wants to be connected to ground in case anybody, in case there's a short to the case. And um, don't want anybody touching it if there's a short circuit to the case. So I'll connect that up to ground as well. There we go. So make sure you connect your grounds if your load has them. And now we'll plug in our system. Now right when I turned it on it says about 18 milliamps, but now it's dropping. There we go, it dropped to around 13 milliamps. So what that means is when this uh, blower turns on, it starts out at uh, about 18 milliamps and then quickly drops to 13 milliamps, uh, which means that our fuse has to be bigger than the initial 18 milliamps, not the normal running 13 milliamps. So make sure you take that sort of thing into account. Okay, let's put the uh, fuse in our test system. Uh, I've removed the meter. I'll just take a fuse from a box of fuses here, if I can and put it in the fuse holder. There's different types. This is the way this one works. You just slip it in there like that and close it and there we go. And uh, there we go. So we, there's two wires here. One is a black wire which bypasses the whole thing and one is a red wire which goes to the uh, goes to the fuse itself. It goes through the fuse. So just like we did with the meter, we go from the hot not to the snap disk controller. We go from the hot to the fuse which means, as I said, the red wires uh, goes to the fuse holder. doesn't matter which side of the fuse holder you go to. It's irrelevant. Uh, here, I don't want to, I want to make sure nothing's shorting out here. <laughs> okay, my wire's nice and clean. Then I'll go from the other red wire coming on the other side of the fuse to the snap disk controller. 
the snap disc controller, just following along here, snap disc controller to one of the prongs of my load. Uh, I'm going to go from the small prong since that's the hot one. This fan doesn't really, well, I don't know if the fan cares or not. It's, it plugs like that for a reason. And then I'll go from the fatter prong to the, well, now I have a choice. I can go to the neutral there and we just close the circuit. But notice what I did. I'm not using the black wire right here at all. It's just a length of wire. I don't have to really. But it actually would get kind of awkward in terms of your wiring, uh, possibly. Um, so that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with what I just did there. Uh, but watch what happens if I go like this. I'll go through that black wire. I'm silly. I'm adding an extra wire I don't need. Well, that, that's okay. Doesn't hurt. Not necessary, but doesn't hurt. But watch what happens now. See, I've got a whole nice linear circuit right here. <laughs> and you might find that you'll have to do it that way, uh, just because of the way your wires run. Um, electrically, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's just test it right here, see if our fuse is good. Yep, the fan turned on, so our fuse is a good fuse. <laughs>